Hey, and welcome to another episode on automating your home with Home Assistant and Node-RED. Today we're going to be doing another hardware focused episode, and as you can probably tell from the picture in picture, uh, we're going to be working on Sonos this time. Uh, for those of you who don't know, Sonos is a high fidelity wireless whole home speaker solution that's really popular in, in North America. I'm not so sure how popular it is around the world, but uh, they're quite common around here when it comes to um, you know smart home solutions, things like that. And the newer generation of Sonos speakers even have um, smart assistants built into them. Uh, but today we're not going to be working on any of the smart assistant aspects of it. We're just going to be working on leveraging Node-RED to start a playlist, uh, set the volume level, and, and start playing uh, through our Sonos. So let's get started. Uh, the first thing we're going to need is a piece of software called the HTTP Sonos API, or the Sonos HTTP API. Um, it was it's an open source piece of software. It was made by a user named Jishi, and it's available on GitHub. So what we're going to do is we're going to navigate to GitHub. Actually, we'll just search for the uh, the project on Google. Uh, Sonos HTTP API, and it's our first response here to get uh, Jishi's GitHub page for Node Sonos HTTP API. And there's some very simple install instructions here. Um, obviously, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to clone the repository into our uh, into our server here, and we'll do that by grabbing this URL and then navigating to our home directory on our automation server and doing a git clone and then pasting that URL. Yes, and there we go. It, we have that folder. Now that, that folder is not. Um, super friendly so I'm just going to change it to um, a more simplified folder name so we'll do a move that and we'll call that let's call it Sonos all right so now we've got a Sonos folder we'll cd into it and in here we've got the github um, the entire github repository for that project so in his instructions here. He gives the install instructions, which is basically just an npm install dash dash production. So we'll do that. And what this is going to do is resolve all the dependencies that this code needs to run in Node. Okay, so that finished with a couple warning messages that aren't very critical and uh, just telling me that there's an update available so at some point I should probably update node but anyway uh, it looks like everything was successful and we'll do a quick npm start to start the server and it looks like it starts right up perfect so this is what the server looks like when it's starting obviously we don't want to be starting the server in an active terminal for long-term use but this is a good way to you know quickly test it and make sure that the uh, the installation was correct. And what we're going to do now is create a systemd unit file so that it can be started and stopped uh, the same way we start and stop, you know, Node-RED or Home Assistant, and also enable it to be started at boot. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new service file at sudo vi etsy systemd system and we'll call the service file sonoshttp.service. Okay, so we have a blank file here. I'm going to paste in a uh, boilerplate service file that I use for this kind of thing. Uh, actually the same style service file that we used in video one. And I'm just gonna correct some of the directories here because, oh, actually, you know what? That looks like it's already correct. So the exact start is coming from home net admin Sonos and it's going to be starting server.js. The working directory is home net admin Sonos. Obviously yours might be different uh, based on you know, what user you use or, or the directory structure of your home automation server. But this is a good boilerplate. It can be uh, tailored to your needs. And I'll post it in the video description. So I'll write and quit this. And we will enable it so it starts at boot and then start it up. So sudo systemd enable Sonos HTTP. Oh, pseudo system. Sorry, pseudo pseudo system CTL. 
enable Sonos HTTP and sudo systemctl start. Okay, and we didn't get any errors on start, but we can use the journal CTL just to make sure that that started properly. So sudo journal CTL dash u sonos HTTP. And you can see here that the server uh, output is almost identical to the way it looks when we started in the terminal earlier. So everything looks good in that respect. Another way we can test it, obviously, is navigating to that server. So it's listening on our automation server on port 5005. So let's go have a look at what that looks like. Go. So as you can see, this API exposes a really nice front end, um, which gives you command examples and even allows you to execute some commands via links. Um, what we're going to do before we get started using this API via Node-RED is let's get an idea of the names of the speakers that it has found. So you can get that info by uh, getting, using the get zones tag here and it presents you with a whole whack of JSON data. Now this JSON data is explaining the current state of each speaker. So if a speaker was in the middle of playing something, it'll give you, you know, the name of the song it was playing, uh, some info of, of what it's, of where that song's location is on the internet, where it's pulling the stream from. Mostly what we're looking for right now is just the names of the actual entities. So we can do that by doing a control F and looking for the tag room name. So this room name tag is duplicated a couple times throughout this JSON data. So we're just looking for unique IDs. So it looks like it found living room rear, it found kitchen, it found living room front, and it found bathroom. So the speaker that I have on the picture in picture is actually my bathroom speaker. Uh, so that's the one we're going to be interacting with. So let's remember that, that it's called bathroom and that's how we'll be calling it from node red for the examples. So we'll go back and I highly encourage that you, you read this over to see, uh, you know, the capabilities that this has, what it can and can't do. Um, it's, it's very complete and it's, it's very feature rich in terms of, you know, it even allows you to do some things like locking volume levels. So if you're hosting a party and you, you don't want other people messing with your, your, your sound system, turning it up and down, you can do that. You can add and remove, uh, other speakers from the group dynamically. Um, you can increase the volume obviously and stuff like that, but read this over. Uh, a lot of really good work has been put into this and, um, that's why I prefer it over you know, um, Home Assistant's native Sonos control via its media player plugin. So let's work with this in Node-RED now. We'll go to our Node-RED server. And what we're going to be using to control this is the, obviously it's an HTTP API. So we're going to be using HTTP web calls, uh, HTTP requests. So we'll start by putting in an injection node, which will be firing off our test requests. And let's drag an HTTP. Now, be careful you don't take an HTTP input or an HTTP response. We're going to be using HTTP requests to interact with this system. So drag a blank HTTP request out onto the pane, double click it, and we're going to be using the this URL to interact with it. So obviously it's going to be HTTP localhost, since the server is running on the same host as um, Node-RED. And then you call out the name of the speaker you want to interact with, which is bathroom. And what I usually do at the beginning of any Sonos flow is I do an isolate. So in case someone was using the app or, you know, a previous uh, use of this API was had it paired with another speaker, we want to eliminate any variables uh, and know what we're controlling and know where it's going to be playing. So we'll start with an isolate. And what that does is it actually uh, just tells the speaker, hey, if you're paired with anyone else, forget that pairing. I want to interact with you only right now. And we'll call this isolate. Done. And it's just a matter of copying and pasting this node to uh, do the rest of the flow. So we'll copy it, paste it, and put it in front. And then we'll do, uh, we'll set the volume. We'll say volume. We'll say 45, which is 45% of Sonos's volume. We'll say volume 45 for the name. Done. 
and then we'll copy and paste again and we will set a playlist let's scroll and let's have a quick look at the api so we can see what playlists um, it knows about now the sonos playlists come from the sonos app so when you open the sonos app and you define a playlist based on uh, a source whether it be google play music or plex or or spotify or whatever um, that's where it's in the Sonos app that you're going to be naming your playlist. It's not necessarily what the playlist might be called in Spotify. It's not necessarily what the playlist might be called in Google Home. It's it's the ones that are in the Sonos app. So that's important to remember. So let's see what it sees as playlists. So I've got a couple playlists here. I've got piano and thumbs up. Uh, let's do the piano playlist for now. It's got a lower chance of uh, copyright infringement. So playlist uh, piano. And we'll save that. Oh, we'll name it set playlist. And then we'll do one more to play that playlist. Slash play. And we'll say play for the name. Okay, so connect up all these nodes so that one feeds into the other when it finishes its its uh, its action. We'll deploy and let's see what happens. Okay, so right away we see there's a problem here. We're getting an error message back on these nodes. It says connection refused. If we look inside the node, we should be able to see the problem. It looks like we're getting the connection refused message because I forgot to specify the port um, when dealing with the Sonos HTTP API. I didn't specify to Node-RED where that service was running, what port it was running on. So obviously Node-RED wasn't able to connect. So let's add that port in now, 5005. Done. It's too bad we copied and pasted all these because they're wrong, but 5005, done. 5005, and okay. So now let's deploy the nodes with the proper port configured. See those messages disappear, and we'll try it again. Okay, so I'll look at the request went through, and the Sonos should start playing. And there we go. So the Sonos is playing the music on the playlist that we set, the piano playlist, at the volume level 45, just as we specified. And uh, yeah, looks like everything works as expected. So I'll pause this manually for now. So we have a fully functioning uh, flow here to start playing music, but obviously the timestamp in injection node is not the way we want to be starting this usually. This is not a, a true use case for, for the API because it's probably easier just to open the app and navigate it that way than it is to go down to your machine, sign into Node-RED, click this timestamp injection node and, and start playing like that. So let's let's create a more real world example. One problem that I have as a, a Google Home and Sonos owner is that the Google Home doesn't natively control the Sonos. Now there's a lot of, of workarounds like uh, you can plug in the auxiliary port of the Google Home into the Sonos, you know, Play 5 or, or Play 1's input port. But that's kind of a hacky solution, in my opinion. It's it's not taking advantage of the the capabilities of the devices to be plugged in wherever you want them to be and 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 whatnot. So this was a perfect opportunity for me. Learn when I learned uh, about the Sonos HTTP API, it was a perfect opportunity for me to set up the ability to you know pseudo control the Sonos from a Google Home. So let's do that right now. Uh, we'll take what we learned last video where we had Google Home interact with Node-RED via IFTTT and we will use the same methodology to have Google Home directly control Sonos. Uh, so obviously the first thing that we need to do is we need to navigate to IFTTT. I need to create a new applet, Google Assistant driven. Simple phrase and we just want to say lunchtime. And we'll have Google Home say in response, enjoy. Create that trigger. And our that ingredient will be a webhook. Uh, we'll make a web request. The URL we're going to use is the same that we used yesterday to get into our publicly exposed Home Assistant instance. The method is going to be post. And the body of the message is going to be some JSON data that gives the MQTT topic, uh, then the payload value. But 
this time let's make the MQTT topic scenes lunchtime and this is just how I have uh, my MQTT topics organized I've got various uh, you know lighting and audio configurations that I want for different scenarios like you know lunchtime dinner time uh, parties cleaning up uh, things like that so I use it kind of in a concept of scenes but however you want to organize your MQTT is completely up to you so let's create this action uh, quick review and finish to save and now we have a web request uh, call every time we say lunchtime to our Google Assistant so we'll go back into node red and let's grab an MQTT input node and we'll configure this input node to be listening to scenes lunchtime so done to that and we will pipe this into the flow that we created earlier so that now that MQTT call can kick this off we'll deploy it hey Google lunchtime enjoy And as expected, uh, we got to see the flow go through and the music starts to play. Perfect. So I'll pause this manually. So that's pretty much what I wanted to accomplish in today's video. I uh, just want to give you kind of an overview of the Sonos HTTP API and how it can be used uh, in Node-RED and, you know, give some concrete examples of how it can be used in, in more real world applications. Uh, that API is is extremely uh, complex and well written. Um, it can do much more than what we uh, leverage it for today. So I highly encourage you to you know check out the, the documentation, ask some questions on the GitHub page if you have any issues, and if there's anything else uh, specifically that you'd like to see about it, uh, shoot me a PM, shoot me a comment, and uh, maybe I can do something for you. Next video, uh, we'll be focusing on some different hardware. I'm thinking either a home surveillance system or Lutron Caseta switches. I still haven't you know, decided on that one yet, but both of those will be coming in the near future anyway. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, have a good day and uh, yeah, see you soon.